The next thing I always look at is um, how the feed's made or how it's been formulated. So is it, is it made on a set recipe or is it made by least cost? Um, so a set recipe is where exactly the same ingredients are used every time to make a feed. So when I do, when I do Pride's feed formulations, I literally give them a recipe and tell them how many hundreds of kilograms or how many kilograms of each ingredient um, to put into a feed. So it's like a cake recipe, essentially. They just follow the recipe and it all goes in, and, and that's how that feed's made. Um, and they just follow the recipe every time they make it. With least-costed feeds, um, what happens is that the you've got the specification for the feed. So say it was a, um, I don't know, performance horse feed that needed 14 megajoules of energy and 13% protein and 7 grams per kilogram of calcium and 4.5 grams per kilogram of phosphorus. You put in all these specifications in the software and then you tell it the software, you tell um, it what feed ingredients there are available. So you might tell it that there's wheat and meal mix and corn and barley and cottonseed meal, soybean meal, all of the things that are available and put all of the prices in against it and then you tell the software give me these specifications, so give me this much energy and protein and all these minerals and vitamins, but do it at the least cost. So use essentially the cheapest ingredients to make that feed. Um, and there's nothing wrong with doing that. It's just that in horse nutrition, we're not really sophisticated enough to do a good job of it. Um, and I'll show you why in a little while. But both methods keep the energy, the crude protein, the mineral and vitamin amounts at specified levels, but the composition of least costed feeds is constantly changing. So I'm sure you've all had the experience um, of feeding a feed and then all of a sudden you'll get a new bag and it's completely different. Yeah? Least cost, so I know, you know you sort of said both ways are okay, but least cost... If they're using cheap sources of protein, the bag might say it's 14% protein, but your horse can't digest yep. 14%. Yep. Yeah, and that's protein. a good point. So really, it's not a good thing <coughs> no. to be following least cost. No, no. So they're, they're not doing anything illegal when they least cost feed, but um, and they would talk about protein quality because that's the biggest problem with least costing feeds is that the protein quality in the in the least costed feeds is often very poor because they use the cheapest sources of protein they can get and often that ends up being cottonseed meal, which they can't digest very well. Um, so, I mean, a big thing for you when you walk into a feed store is, well, how do you know which is which? How do you know if they've least costed the feed or, or not? Um, and it's pretty, it's pretty easy to tell because you just read the ingredient list. Um, so a set recipe feed is going to have a really, really specific ingredient list and there will be no ambiguity whatsoever in any of the ingredients. So this is just using the Biomare cube from Prides as an example. So its ingredient list um, is extruded corn, extruded barley, extruded wheat, extruded soybeans, extruded faba beans, extruded lupins. They're all extruded because it's an extruded cube. Um, calcium phosphate, which is calcium and phosphorus, um, dicalcium phosphate, salt, cold-pressed canola oil, dried molasses, the Pride's trace mineral and vitamin premix, um, which is just the, all, all the trace minerals. Pretty much every feed company buys their trace mineral and vitamin premixes from companies who specialise in making trace mineral and vitamin premixes because there's so many little bits and pieces of things that go into a feed to give you all the copper, zinc, selenium, iodine and stuff. It's just not practical for the feed companies to make them themselves. And the premix companies specialise in doing it. There's quite an art to making a good premix that's well mixed um, and has the right amount of ingredients. So that's what that stuff is. Um, limestone and lysine. So there's nothing there you go, well, it could be this, but it could also be this. Compared to, um, this is another breeding feed in Australia. So its ingredient list reads as pressure cooked and fully stream, steam extruded grains, excluding oats. So you know it's not oats, but you're not really sure what the grains are. Um, vegetable protein, including soybean meal. And I, I don't really know whether... It means that sometimes they make, might use soybean meal or all the time they might they use soybean meal. I don't really know um, what the meaning is there. Molasses, just fine. Vegetable oil, could be any vegetable oil. Um, salts, heat-stable vitamins and chelated mineral proteinates. So um, if we look at these, your grains, of course, can include wheat, corn, barley. Could all be, also be sorghum, rice, triticale, rye, millet and cereal grain byproducts like bran and pollard. Now, um, I don't really mind feed companies switching and changing between cereal grains because a cereal grain is quite similar. Like the difference between corn and wheat when, you, when it really comes down to it is not a lot um, apart from 
gluten, but we don't really look at that too much with horses. But um, it doesn't matter so much if they're switching between cereal grains. Where it does really start to matter is when they start to switch between these protein sources. So um, your vegetable protein can include canola meal, soybean <coughs> meal, pea pollard, sunflower meal, cottonseed meal, flax or linseed meal, copper meal, peanut meal and corn gluten meal. Um, and, the, and the difference in protein between all of those sources and the quality of protein, which we'll talk about in detail soon, um, is massive. So it has a huge impact on how well a horse is going to do on, on one of those feeds. Um, and vegetable oils can be soybeans, sunflower, corn, canola, flax or blended oils. And again, from, a, from an energy perspective or from a calorie perspective, an oil is an oil is an oil. It doesn't matter what oil they use from that perspective. If you start um, getting into the finer points of nutrition and you're interested in looking at the omega fatty acid profile, it makes a huge difference what oil they use. Um, so it does have an impact on the, on the end product. Um, the least cost formulation method is used by many of Australia's horse feed manufacturers and you just next time you go into a feed store just for interest, flip a few bags over and have a read and see, um, see what they've got listed as their ingredient and see what, if, you, if you think it's made by a set recipe or if it's least costed. So your problem with least cost, you never really know what you're going to get, um, which may or may not bother you. If, you, if you're happy um, with it, then that's fine, but you, you do really not ever know um, what you're going to get in that feed. There can be palatability issues. Um, we don't see this a lot, but I know I've dealt with, and there's not many cases, but um, thoroughbred horses which tend to get a little bit picky um, in training and then the feed all change and they all just go, <laughs> I'm not eating that, um, which is a bit of a problem if you've got some that are a couple of days out from a race and they, they stop eating their feed. But the biggest problem by far that um, we see with these least costed feeds is that the, the um, protein quality is constantly changing from batch to batch with the various vegetable proteins or it's just really poor quality all of the time because they're constantly using the cheapest source of, of protein they can get, which is Generally, um, cottonseed meal it will never be soybean because it, um, and soybean is your highest quality protein. It will never be soybean because that's the most expensive source of protein you can get. Um, so this protein quality potentially has major impacts on muscle and bone development in young horses um, and on milk production and maintenance of muscle mass in mature horses. And I, I see this. I spend a lot of time on um, stud farms, thoroughbred stud farms in the Hunter Valley, and the, the difference, I wish I had photos, um, and I, I need to take photos more often of young horses, but the difference when a, when a young thoroughbred weanling has changed from a feed that's least costed um, with poor quality protein onto the, the biomere cube um, that's got soybean protein, the difference in their top line and the muscling over their rump is unbelievable. Um, to the point where I say to people, I, I feel like I'm making it up, but you should see the difference in them. Um, and people who have changed off least costed feeds onto um, the soybean based protein feeds, um, now, you know, coming into weanling prep, because they sell a lot of their young horses as weanlings these days, um, they might only have them in the stables for three, maybe four weeks if they're lucky, because they don't actually need to build them up and finish them off. They look amazing in the paddock, they just need to bring them in so they're handled and they're rugged and their coats look better and things like that. Um, so it, it does make a massive difference. And in your performance horses as well, if you're trying to build muscle in a performance horse and you don't have them on good quality protein, they're not going to build muscle. Um, and we'll talk about top line soon. 